Hello, it's Chris from Chris and Acrylic Boring. We're based in the UK in East Sussex. Thank you so much for joining me today. I do hope you enjoy this video. I've used three flip cups and some lovely moody colours. I'm using a very small canvas today. It's 20 centimetres by 20 centimetres. I'm using three flip cups and I'm going to draw the ribbon of gold for the horizon line straight from the bottle. First cup is representing land, light, sky, and dark sky, but they are kind of stormy. I've gone back to the colour palette that I used for my painting, Distant Horizon. It's a quite a limited palette. It's black, iridescent silver, Prussian blue, Payne's grey, yellow ochre, a tiny bit of white, and the metallic gold. I use all these colours in various quantities, and if I want something darker, I have more of the black and darker colours and vice versa for the lighter colours. The gold band I'll be putting on in a minute. The land colour is meant to be quite dark, but I've used yellow ochre in it just to kind of lift it a bit. I didn't want any silver in there because that's for the sky, so I've used the yellow ochre just to lighten it. The cuts I'm using are very tiny, but you can see it is a bit of a squeeze getting them all on the canvas. And as the cups are sitting on the canvas, they have a chance to drain through while I put the metallic gold colour on. I put a ruler on the canvas to help guide me when I was doing my line. Now this line is meant to be at the top third of the bottom of the canvas. If I had it halfway, it would cut the painting in half. It is very tricky doing this this way. This is the first time I've done it this way. Normally I would actually have a cup and flip it along with the rest of them, but I was running out of room, so this seemed to be the best alternative. I was ready to do my reveals, and you can't hear it, but when I do these, um, I usually go, ooh, ah, but you can't hear it because I'm doing voiceovers. But basically, I was just really loved all the colours. I used the end of the cup colour to just make sure that corners are covered and the edges, just to make sure it's easier when I tilt. Now this cup I just um, pulled back was the first time I used the Prussian blue, and I didn't spot it, but you can see it really easily here. There was a lump of paint in there. When I was squeezing the Prussian blue the first time, there was a slight resistance and, and then it suddenly shot out. So that should have let me know there was something blocking the nozzle. Anyway, I'll remove it later, but you've got so much going on, I didn't spot it immediately. I was ready to do my tilting, but I just gave it a really quick torch, a very light one, just to get rid of air bubbles. There's no silicon in there, it was just to get removed those little bubbles. And this is when I've noticed that the paint on the left is totally eaten into my gold strip. And I'm thinking, yeah, perhaps I should do something about that. So I get a ruler and I just push it back a bit. Um, so obviously doing that ribbon, it wasn't the right solution. It kind of worked, but I would have to have a lot more paint on there to stop that other paint eating into it. I've got my paint catcher ready and I'm just tilting really slowly, but I will speed the video up now or else it will be an extremely long one.
there's a top part that isn't covered with paint and I could stretch this over but I was in danger of losing my lines and I had some really great straight lines. To cover this area I just added some more of the Payne's Grey. I didn't want to add black, that would have been too dark but the Payne's Grey is a good alternative because it is quite dark and it just finishes off the painting. I had finally spotted that lump of um, paint that was in the middle section so I have removed it now and to disguise the marks I made I just took a wooden stirrer and on its side dragged it through the marks. Where I had added the Payne's Grey at the top I thought it just looked a bit solid so I just ran a bit of silver through it and also pulled um, my wooden stirrer through it again just to help break up the paint and make it look slightly more interesting. I didn't like the cells that had come up in the top right hand corner, this was the white paint, so I again used the wooden stirrer on its side to break them up. There is so much paint on the canvas at the moment, the majority of marks I make, the paint kind of infills a bit, so I don't leave bare canvas um, exposed. Sometimes I will end up with a bit of texture, but I don't mind this, anything like that I find adds to the painting. Here's the dry painting and I'm absolutely in love with it. I love the colours, I love the darkness and the storminess of it. The strip of metallic gold looks absolutely yummy. The yellow ochre breaks up the black in the bottom but you've got hints of um, white. You can see some of the lines I added by dragging through my stirrer. Then you've got the middle section which is mainly the silvers. Now I had a bit of a mess up with the lump of paint but I think it's added to the um, overall pattern. And then you hit the top part which is really lovely and moody and it oh, it's fabulous. This canvas was great fun to do. Um, I've done a lot of large canvases recently so it was quite a nice change to work on a small canvas and it's amazing what you can achieve, all the effects and everything. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I certainly enjoyed creating the painting. If you'd like to see further paintings please do subscribe. We'll speak to you soon and take care. Bye!